Hi guys, I'm Eric Voss, and here at New Rockstars, we like to give you some deep insights into the movies and TV shows that we love at a depth of obsessive paranoia that senior people don't bother with. And while we're proud of the work we do here, sometimes the mass volume of stuff that we cover, or just by thinking about this stuff too hard and giving ourselves nosebleeds, uh, we miss the mark. Or, you know, overshoot it by a few planets. So as the year comes to a close, I thought it would be fun to look back at the biggest and weirdest stuff that we got wrong. Theories that went too far and the tumbles down the rabbit holes that ended in hard rock bottoms. And to be clear, I'm not apologizing. I retract nothing. This stuff is hard. I don't have time to sleep. Seriously, there's a creepy clown just standing off camera whose only job is to squirt me with seltzer and scream in my face if I ever nod off. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm awake, I'm awake. And spoiler warning for any of the stuff we cover here, Thor Ragnarok, Game of Thrones, Rick and Morty, Justice League, Stranger Things, Walking Dead, Legion, we, we, we covered all that stuff, right? Here we go, five debunked theories. Number five, Justice League, Alfred Pennyworth will die. At last summer's Comic-Con, a beefy new trailer for Justice League came out, and if you remember, it ended with this cryptic tease. And how our imaginations ran wild. In our breakdown, Philip and Sam speculated that Alfred is probably talking to Superman, but then they rode this thought train a few more stops. A lot of people think, that shoulder's not red, it's brown, like Hal Jordan's flight jacket. Maybe Alfred has been tasked with hiding a mother box, and this is him staring down Steppenwolf like a badass. Other big guess, considering that this character has a movie coming soon too, is Captain Marvel, aka Shazam, aka Billy Batson. The red shoulder could be from the red on his costume. Brainwash Superman or not, it feels like this could be the last we see of Alfred in the DCEU. Okay, you know, I don't blame those guys at all for running with this, but the problem is this shot wasn't even in the movie. Like many shots we saw in those trailers, this was left on the cutting room floor as Joss Whedon reshot and re-edited major sections of Zack Snyder's original footage. So while Alfred might have been the one to dodge a bullet here, I do agree with those guys that this was probably going to be the resurrected Superman meeting Alfred in that scene. There was the way Alfred punctuated hope. Hope. And really, given what we know about the plot now, there was really no one else Alfred could have been talking to. Green Lantern, Shazam, and evil Superman weren't really as much part of the story as some of us thought they could be. Okay, I wanted to get Philip and Sam's slight misfire out of the way because the rest of these are all me, baby. And let's start with a real cringer. Number four, Stranger Things, second season. The monster is bar. So in 2017, the anticipation for Stranger Things second season was high with lots of speculation over what this new mysterious monster was. Over the months, I theorized that the possible influences could include the D&D monster, the Thessal Hydra that was teased at the end of season one. Also the HP Lovecraftian characters like Cthulhu or Nyarlathotep. Also more obscure monsters like the Eldrazi from Magic the Gathering or the Amygdala from the game Bloodborne. But those are all names that are too hard for me to pronounce over and over. So here was my final hot take. What if this Thessal Hydra monster is Barb. Ooh, good joke, younger Voss. Hey, nice beaver shirt. Make sure to wear that in every video. Okay, you know what? I wasn't the most off the mark. Barb totally was part of Stranger Things too, just more in an off-screen, dead kind of way. Meanwhile, we learn in the final episodes that this monster's closest parallel was the Mind Flayer from D&D. And if you're interested in more of my Stranger Things obsession, I actually dug up 80 80s references in other videos, so go check out that breakdown when you get a chance. Okay, next up, number three, Rick and Morty, the return of Evil Morty. In 2017, new rock stars began to cover my favorite anime animated show on TV right now, Rick and Morty, pointing out all the subtle jokes, obscure references, and yes, some hidden dickies in the animation. And the biggest twist came in episode seven of the third season, an episode that focused on the Citadel of Ricks from various dimensions, which featured the return of the mysterious season one character, dubbed Evil Morty, a corrupt politician who becomes the evil president of the Citadel. This was a huge bombshell for fans, and validation that our obsessive theorizing that Evil Morty was behind everything wasn't a waste of time. It still kind of was. And because we love too much of a good thing, we all predict predicted that Evil Morty would return in the season finale, turning Rick and Morty's world upside down the way the season finales for seasons one and two did. I predict that the president that the episode description promised Rick would meet is actually the newly elected president of the Citadel, Evil Morty, who will have some secret plot against this president, perhaps using this infestation of Gugas. Infestation of Gugas. Oh, and I predict these wrongly. It's like I have to sound as stupid as possible. Also, Young Voss, good work keeping that beaver shirt relevant. Did you ever wash it? Instead, the season finale was a much more straightforward episode with Rick and Morty battling the American president for a selfie and Rick allowing the Smith family to reset to a state of relative normal. It's like we forgot the creators Justin Roiland and Dan Harmon aimed to turn the world of the show upside down in pretty much every episode. And letting fans force them into bending their crazy animated adventure into a more serious long-term political thriller with a Game of Thrones type villain isn't at all what Rick and Morty's all about. That said, I, I still kind of believe Evil Morty is what Rick and Morty is all about. Actually, speaking of Game of Thrones, let's move on to number two on our list, Game
Game of Thrones, Azora High, the prince that was promised is Jamie Lannister? Now, back before we got neck deep in Game of Thrones Season 7 breakdowns and Westeros weekly recaps, I made a video sharing the theory that came up online that the ultimate hero of Game of Thrones could very well be Jamie the Kingslayer. The theory involved linking parts of Jamie's story with the legend of Azora High, combining them with some choice selected bits of dialogue from the show and the books, all yielding this little jam. Lightbringer doesn't refer to a literal sword, but Jamie's golden hand bursting into flames as he chokes Cersei, causing literal ashes to form in her mouth. Now, I know what you're gonna say. This is still possible, right? There's still six episodes left. They could do this. Don't do that to me. Don't get baby's hopes up. The events of season seven made it pretty clear who the heroes of Game of Thrones will be. Danny and Jon, AKA Aegon Targaryen, united in battle against the White Walkers and the Night King. And as time ticks by, it's looking increasingly doubtful that these old prophecies from the backstory on the show and the books will come into play and suddenly be relevant in the final six episodes. Like I think other supporting players like Jaime and Tyrion and Arya will definitely have big roles to play, but I don't think the writers will make time to deliver on a barely plausible fan theory about hot hands. And our final wrong theory, Number one on our list, the Soul Stone. The final Infinity Stone is with Heimdall and Thor Ragnarok. So with the trailer of Avengers Infinity War now in our lives, the Marvel Cinematic Universe's hunt for the Infinity Stones has become something we all care about now, not just us nerds. Last year, Doctor Strange revealed the second to final Infinity Stone, the Green Time Stone in the Eye of Agamotto. After that point, a theory emerged about the location of the final final stone, the Soul Stone that I signed into wholeheartedly. The idea was that the first letter of each of the sources of the first five Infinity Stones were T, S, A, O, and N, which, when rearranged, give you the name Thanos, with the H missing. That H could refer to Heimdall. Now, he is blind, but he has the ability to see souls wherever they are in the universe. And having the Soul Stone in his head could be how he does that, and why his eyes appear to be orange. Leaving it up to Thor Ragnarok as the most likely film to reveal it. Oh, even younger bedroom boss. Why did you yell so much? Of course, Heimdall didn't have the Soul Stone in Thor Ragnarok. Heimdall was barely in Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok didn't really give a shit about the Infinity Stones. And sure, this theory sounded good at the time, except for the fact that N would have had to have been for the Eye of Agamotto necklace, and no one ever called it a necklace. Guys, it's just easy to look over these things when you're blinded by the sexiness of acronyms. And to wrap things up now, for your home viewing pleasure, let's close out with some behind the scenes footage of the screw ups we make while recording these videos. Uh, because when, remember when, remember when, well, well, Wolf Dobney. Rem <laughs> Remember when Ralph is told he's getting his very own super scoop? Sc <laughs> There's no scoot in that suit. I know Hugh Jackman said Logan was his final Wolverine movie, but come on, he's got to drop by. I can't do Australian. Hey, if the Flash wanted to take a page out of Arrow's Burke, Birk, Birk. And yes, the bullet. <coughs> Ooh. When you don't talk all day, a little magical frog crawls out of your lungs up into your larynx and gives you cancer. <clears throat> and that's why, kids, you should never stop talking. What a good they be. What could... <laughs> I'm leaving it. The difference is Kylo makes his... Something just happened here. My computer's going crazy. There's a ghost in my computer. There's ghosts everywhere. And I'll see you guys next time. Farts, I'm out. Eric doesn't do this when he has enough sleep. Eric only does this when he has no sleep. Eric is going crazy. Whatever, just use... Let's just go to bed. Yeah, you know, it's just not as clean between takes. Shut up! Thank you for watching this, and be sure to subscribe to New Rockstars to get, honestly, far more accurate and on-point theories about the properties you love, but sure, also probably a few more bogus, far-fetched theories in 2018. Hit me up on Twitter, at EA Voss, or follow New Rockstars on Twitter, at New Rockstars, for updates on our videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.